Hello, welcome once again uh, to discuss now the alternator again and the starter because it's it's the most important part of the initial startup process. Obviously, um, the, the battery over here that we see over here, the symbol for the battery, we have many multiple connections. Okay, first of all, we know is it, we know it goes to the starter solenoid. Starter solenoid is obviously the solenoid attached to the starter, but also you have sometimes a starter relay before that. The one with the big current that goes to the starter itself is another wire. Now you have another wire going from the battery, which is, we talk about the thick wire <clears throat> from the positive. This is the positive going through the terminal, the post, and it goes through another big, huge fuse, 175 amps. Now, sometimes you're not going to see that big fuse. That big fuse, in this case, for a GM, is by the radiator. So that allows all the current going through the power distribution. Where, what is that? That's where all the fuses are, the fuse box. <clears throat> and also, when then the current flows through the fuses to the appropriate circuits that they are feeding. Ignition fuel, uh, sensors, computers, all that comes from here. So obviously, as you can detect, that battery fuse is a huge fuse. Why? Because you're going to carry a lot of cur uh, current going through all those fuses to the fuse box. Remember, there's one under the hood. There's one under the dashboard. A lot of circuits over there. So you're going to find a thick wire over here. So you have one going to the power distribution to the fuses like we just specified, one going through the solenoid, another one going to to the actual alter, uh, uh, um, starter motor itself, another one going to the alternator. The picture of the alternator or the diagram, excuse me, the diagram is BAT. That's that red wire, the thick red wire that you see that goes to the post of the alternator circuit. Okay, now, as you can see over here from this diagram, it goes through something called a fusible link, which melts at a certain temperature when there's too much current. So therefore, this alternator detects how much voltage there is at the battery. Okay, now... This might open up at times. When it opens up, obviously, guess what? You can't have the alternator going back to the to the to the battery, charging it, or going back to the other circuits. And let's look at this a little more closer. What I just said: Alt <coughs> starter motor is engaged. Okay, you have current flowing to the starter, current flowing to the power distribution, current flowing also to the battery over here, to the alternator over here also to the regulator parts, to everything. Now, you have ground wires coming to the, the negative terminal also. In this case, we have three ground wires. If you look at the negative, you don't see only one negative wire. You'll see multiple. In this case, it's three thick wires. So if there's 300 amps being delivered from the positive, 300 amps comes back to the negative. Okay? It might be maybe 100 here, maybe 150, whatever the it is, 300 upon startup, 300 amps leaves the battery, 300 amps has to come back to the battery. If 500 amps come leave the battery, 500 amps has to come back to the battery, a complete circuit. Okay, we just said the fusible link might open up. Fusible link opens up, guess what? Now the alternator cannot do its job. Because the alternator, if you look at the diagram, I'll try to hold it still. Alternator starts working, the BAT po uh, 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 cable that's connected to the post terminal of the alternator. Current is being fed what? To the battery to recharge it. The starter is not in the picture anymore. We still need current from the alternator feeding what? Feeding... The other power distribution accessories, the sensors, the computers, the ignition modules, the fuel injectors, until he's ready to take over. Now, if this is open, the fusible link is open, and we lose the generator, we lose the, the alternator, it depends on how long it charged the battery. You can have 12 volts. You can have 12 volts output from the alternator, 
to the battery and the and the car will still function it will still function depending on the reserve capacity the, depending how much this was charged up but it is a bad sign that you measure 12 volts with the car running it's a, obviously it is a bad sign we know the charging system failed us so therefore i want to expect to see 13 to 14 volts if it's colder outside, the voltage will be even higher from the alternator. A temperature compensating circuit takes over. But we're feeding the battery. We're feeding the power distribution, all the fuses of the circuits that he started in the first place. So let's go over this a little more clearer. We're, in, we're, starting the, we're starting in the start position. We're starting in the run position. In the run position, we're priming the fuel system. So we're getting the fuel pressure ready we're getting the fuel pressure already in the line from the fuel pump being turned on. Then we are ready at the start position, which is the starter position. We already have fuel pressure in the line. When? From the run position. That's called priming the line, the, the, the fuel line, the system. So therefore, we already have fuel pressure. We already have, what we need is the starter. <clears throat> so the starter is engaged. We turn, we hold down the, we hold down the, the, the key. Starter mode, starter, the battery takes over, feeds the appropriate circuits, the fuses, fuses, uh, feeds the starter, and feeds the alternator, because remember, the alternator has a regular cir regulator circuit in it also, that also needs current in to work. Once the starter did his job, he engaged the flywheel, which engaged the crankshaft, which in, which made the pistons and the camshaft and all that. You are familiar with the story of an engine, so I don't have to go over it. But anyway, the engine is engaged. It's running. It's turning over. Now the alternator, we looked up to the alternator to say, you know what? Now you got to take over. The battery did his job. You have to charge him, and you have to take care at the same time at the, uh, the, the fuses and the other circuits that are being used at the moment so it's one with the other but remember don't forget this battery fuse is a huge fuse and like i said you're not always going to find the fuse box in this case it was by the radio support it could be in different locations but pay attention to this one the fusible link might melt it might open up on you okay that's very important to know now if you want to go, you want to understand how to test an alternator, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, or on a model of Electronic Schematics by Joseph, and you'll see what I'm talking about when I'm referring to how to test these batteries and these alternators. Thank you.